All right, well this time I was able to uh, get the kernel source to boot and what I did or what I changed was in the uh, board config I went ahead and enabled that special um, make custom make boot image uh, dot make file and uh, included the make boot arguments that we had determined that we didn't think we needed before it should have been able to build those on its own but uh, for some reason it was not so we went ahead and declared those and now after uh, building that again and flashing it to the device the blue life XL boots up it uh, goes into the recovery mode as we would expect and uh, everything is displayed properly the screen is working uh, but the touch screen is not so I can see all the buttons but I still can't touch them uh, another interesting thing is um, the uh, screen is displaying a mouse in the center of it as if you were going to use a mouse and keyboard which is really really interesting to me personally but uh, not something I'm used to seeing but still not able to use that touch screen now looking at the default config I uh, just searching through there looking for touch and we see touch screen is a yes but there's a lot of these drivers that are turned off right now and so we're gonna have to figure out exactly what it is we need to do about that and what what uh, what those are for now also we have this regular default config and then we have this perf default config and I looked uh, around a little bit <clears throat> excuse me and it appears the perf default config is very similar to the the def config but the difference being the perf is for user builds and the def config is for engineering builds so just a few little things here and there that they have uh, made slightly different um, to um, keep things interesting I guess but uh, more importantly to uh, you know allow you to do more things when you're using uh, an engineering build so if we open this up here uh, and we can actually do a comparison and it's gonna make me find it all over again Arch arm configs MSM 16L5261 def config. Okay. So, um, you know, you can actually use something like diffuse here and do a little bit of a difference. Um, there's a signature on the uh, regular and not a signature on the um, user build, is the first thing. Um, this uh, net filter has idle timer but it's actually still here as well it's just they put it in a different spot so that's all the same um, you have the serial console is available for the engineering build and not available for the user build you can do uh, multi-touch on the HID uh, screen which you cannot do in a user build um, this is just a misplacement of the same option and then you have all of this core site which I don't really know what all this core site does we'd have to look it up try to figure that out but apparently that's only available in the engineering build and uh, then you get down here to um, you know quite a bit of debugging information that's added in um, which uh, you know is is probably useful for an engineering build but not really usable um, for a user build so that's why they take it out um, these are comments that, by the way these little uh, pound sign with this required and this number they required it on 2015 on August 17th and they said add the firmware update for etc etc um, you know different things that they put in there so the big the big takeaway really is this core site and this debugging information which doesn't really affect why our touchscreen is not working but it is interesting to uh, look at so I'm definitely gonna have to continue troubleshooting and seeing what uh, to do there you can see I'm I've actually jumped into the device on ADB and of course you know D message still works uh, so we'll be able to do a little bit of troubleshooting that way but I think my next big move is going to go back to the beginning and look at that video we made 
where we uh, search through the device uh, info and we have all the list of things like the drivers that are being used which hopefully will show us for the touchscreen driver and then also we saw um, you know the different inputs so hopefully we can take a look at that as well um, if we uh, look in here and we go to input and we look there's uh, several different inputs in here event 0, 1, 2, 3, the mice and then the mouse and typically like if you cat event 0 uh, you might see like here um, no, none of those were working uh, what I'm actually doing is pushing the buttons on the uh, phone to see if any of them display and I'm not getting anything on those so far there we go. So event two is the down button of the volume. And event three is the up button of the volume. And then typically you'll see something like uh, on, on one of the events, uh, both events will take an input from the power button there's the power button uh, which was also an event two with the volume down button and so usually it'll be uh, some kind of conglomerate of the same or a different input notice if I push the down button I get this pattern and then if I push the up button I get a slightly different pattern so or excuse me the power button get a slightly different pattern so a lot of different interesting things you can see there uh, one of those inputs should be for the screen and then when you touch it you should see something happening and so uh, which we can cat event zero again and also see if that might be our sensor nope it's not the sensor or if it is it's not functioning at this moment so a lot of interesting things that we can do and try to troubleshoot a little bit and try to figure out what's going on um, but we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely look into that and see what we can find